Hey, this is Pastor Jeff Daniel of Kingdom Light Church. Get ready for a destiny molding, destiny shaping, destiny impacting, and destiny transforming word of God today. In Kingdom Light Church, you will always know the truth, the truth that will set you free. Now, let's get ready for the word that will bring light to your life. You're blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Quickly, we are going to have um, a testimony uh, versus or testimony slash uh, press report from a mission trip way in Africa. And I want you to please uh, lend me your ears and your time as I bring to the podium this wonderful morning, Minister Cherry, to come test give us some testimonies and feedback about the experience and um, during the mission trip in Africa. I thought I said that she, you have a microphone ready? Put your hands together for her as she comes up. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 So we have some pictures and some video that you're going to be seeing. It's uh, the things that happen during the mission trip. One more time, put your hands together for Pastor Cherry. Amen. Did you go to? Amen. That was too early. Hold up first. Don't push. Don't keep this one for last. Keep that for the last one, please. Amen. Let's do the pictures first. Yeah. Okay, I think let me tell the story, and then we'll go with the pictures after that. Good morning, everyone. I'm happy to be at church today. Um, my name is Cheryl, and uh, I am a member of this church now. Get used to me. Amen. Uh, <laughs> so... Um, by the grace of God, I, I have been in the U.S. for about uh, nine years, actually, this September. And uh, the Lord brought me here on a mission. And the Lord told me he was bringing me here to serve him. Let me make sure I keep my eyes on the time. So I'm starting at 103, so. Um, but the Lord gave me a word uh, when I was in college. I was going to law school, wanted to be a lawyer with every fiber within me. And the Lord called me out. It was a fight. And then the Lord brought me to the U.S. and told me, I'm taking you to serve me and I have been serving the Lord in the U.S. If you go to Deep Elam, you, you ask the police about a crazy woman who stands in the middle of the night to pray. I have been doing that. I've done different prayer sets. I have done also, we have done evangelism in Deep Elam. We have done revival meetings across different states in the U.S. Um, but at the beginning of this year, I, I, I was aware I went to seek the Lord. And then the Lord told me to go to Uganda to go, out, to go and do a crusade. So I had a fight with God about it because I said, there's revival in Uganda. You know, the things are happening in Africa. Africa does not need the gospel. I was like, it's America that needs the gospel. But the Lord told me, go to Uganda to be specific. So the journey started. I started, uh, I, sh I, I sat down with my husband. I told him, the Lord has told me that we sh I should go and do a crusade in Uganda. And my husband said, you know how much we have on our account balance, right? I said, yeah, I know how much is left. But God saw that account balance and still told me to do a crusade. And we are going to go by the word of the Lord. And so we started planning. We put up a team together. And uh, everything was miraculous. The provisions were miraculous. Just I got a job the day I said yes, I got a job. And literally made almost everything that was needed from the crusade from the job. Of course, there was so much more that I couldn't pay for. But so much was paid for out of a job that came on the day I said yes, I got a job. And so um, then I, we went to two different cities in, in Uganda. One is called Mbarara. Mbarara is where the president of Uganda comes from. So it's like the people are very proud. They are very, you know, because the president comes from there. They are very rich people and everything. And it was a fight to go there because I saw myself like I am small for this city, you know. And these platforms are not platforms that anybody just stands on. But in accordance to the, to, to the word of the Lord, I put my faith down and said, God, do what you want to do through me. And so we went to Barara. We had a crusade which was fought against by the very men of God in the church. I shared the whole testimony with Papa how 
pastors, apostles, and bishops were telling me, if you don't have money, don't come to Mbarara. Go somewhere else. Because here we want money. I told them, I don't have money, I have faith. They said, we don't want faith. Bring money. If you don't have money, don't come. And four of them told me clearly and said, this crusade will fail. It will fail completely because th there's a way we do things here. And I told them, I said, you are about to see the God that I serve. This crusade will be a success. Sure enough, we ended up having thousands of people that the place we had for the crusade was not enough. And it was not just the number of people, it was the salvations, the souls that were given to the Lord and the people that came in surrender. And every day of the crusade, we had to believe God every day for about $3,500. Every day, my team will come to me and say, now today we need about $3,500. I said, okay, so we pray for $3,500. By the morning time, we'll have $3,500. And the, deal, <laughs> the bread of the day will be provided for. So after finishing in Barara, we went to Cassandra. Uh, Cassandra is just about one hour. Yeah. Uh, you can start put the pictures. Just leave the video. Um, I, I mixed up all the pictures together, but you can start to put up the pictures. So this was in Cassandra. This is the second place we went to. You can keep going through the slides. Um, this was a conference in Barara district. Um, Cassandra. And these are souls. The people, if you go to the previous slide, please. Uh, the previous slide before this one, if you can go there. Those are people who came to give their lives to the Lord. <laughs> Those are souls, amen? I just want to say these are souls that were won to the kingdom. And this was just on one day. So every day we had people coming to give their life to the Lord in hundreds. And they, this is the, the part of the testimony. They said they never had that amount of people come and give their lives to the Lord in that field. So that was our breakthrough. Keep going, please. There was a praise session in Cassandra. That's how we do it in Africa. This was a discipleship class we had with people who had given their lives to Christ on one of the days. Um, keep going, please. Is that the last one? Things are frozen. Okay, we already saw that. On this day, if you can hold it there, it rained so heavily. In fact, the day before this day, I was on pulpit and I was preaching. In the middle of my preaching, rain started coming. Rain started falling and people started running around. And I told them, I said, it will not rain until the last someone is preached and everyone gets home. So... Some people believed and sat. Other people looked at me and said, you're crazy. <laughs> I will be in the tent. But the rain kept on coming. And so what I did was, because I was under the, you know, the, the covering, I stepped down to where, to under the sky. And I pointed up to the sky. I said, that's it. I'm done. You stop until I am done preaching the gospel. And this heavy rain just cleared. <laughs> and people saw the power of God. And then on this specific day, it started raining at about 3 p.m. Crusade starts at 4 p.m. It started raining at about 3 p.m. And then everyone stayed in the hotels. And, and so I was inside praying. I didn't know it was raining, number one. I didn't know that nobody had gone to the field. But for some reason, the Holy Spirit was able to allow me to step outside. When I stepped out, everyone was sitting inside waiting for the rain. This was now 4 p.m. And so... The partner that I was doing the, the, the crusade with, he tells me, he says, I think we have to cancel today. I said, we don't cancel crusade because of rain. I said, <laughs> Praise the Lord. We don't cancel crusade. We don't cancel any church meeting because of rain. Amen. And so I told them, I said, go out. The moment you step in the rain, the rain will stop. And they said, no, we don't think so. So I got out. I wasn't even dressed for the meeting yet. I got out. I stepped. The moment I stepped under the rain, the rain started to wind up. And then I went to the meeting field. I picked one chair. I put the chair down and I said, today we'll have a meeting because they had already canceled the meeting and people had already left to go home. And we ended up having this number of people come right after the rain. <laughs> Praise the Lord. All right. You can keep going. Okay. This is the part of the baptism. If you can play the video now, because I want to show you something briefly from the video. 
Um, you see the water? Yeah. So there's no sound, but if the sound was on, you can hear people crying. Because as we are dipping people in the water, people are coming out, out of the water manifesting with all kinds of demons. And they had to carry them out. We were there for two more extra hours because demons were being cast out of the people. And the most interesting thing about uh, this place is this. If you can hold the video for a second, please. I want to explain something about this particular place we went to. When we were driving into the city, I had not heard anything from the Lord about the place. So I was asking God, I said, God, what is it about this place we are going to? What is it about this place? When we were about to get into the city, the Lord told me the people are under great distress. That was what the Lord told me. So I started praying. And when indeed we got into the city, the first thing we met was a shrine. The first thing. And you drive every couple of houses, there's a witch doctor shrine. You drive just like two, three houses, there's a witch doctor's shrine. And you walk in, the, you just see the oppression of the enemy over the people. And this place is only one hour and 30 minutes away from the capital city. You will not believe it. And so when we went into that place, I started just, is, Islam is very high. A lot of Muslims in the city, mosques are everywhere. Churches are broken down. You can't even see the wall of a church. But the mosques have been built up. Christians, we have to do better. Amen. We have to do better. The walls of the churches were completely broken down, but the mosques were built up very well. And so when we started doing the crusade, this is the miracle that God did. A lot of Muslims, on this day of the baptism, we baptized 11 people who were Muslims. Praise God. Who had converted from Islam. And there was one woman who was 86 years old. Who came to, she had been a Muslim all her life for 86 years old. And she came with her Gomez. The Gomez is a traditional outfit of Uganda. And she walks into the river, uh, into the water. And when she walks in, I asked her, I said, what is your name? She tells me her name. How old are you, 86? And she told me, I've been a Muslim all my life. But when I came to the crusade, I had the gospel. And I have decided to follow Jesus from this day forward. And so we were able to baptize her. So we baptized over 200 people in this meeting, uh, in this very day that we did the, the baptism. And the part, Pastor, that was amazing for me is that as we were baptizing people, people were running from the villages because the power of God was touching them in the villages and they were running forward. They just came and they said, what's going, what's going on here? We said, what do you mean what's going on here? I said, I don't know. I was at home. I just had like a sound. And so I came. I said, we are baptizing people. I said, I want to give my life to Jesus as well. And we baptized them. One of the pastors, you see the pastor on the far left who is baptizing the one with the, I don't know how to say, black shirt. This pastor, he, had, he has a about 40-year-old son who has fought Christianity not only in his home but in the city for all of his life. The guy refused Jesus. The guy fought Jesus. The guy punched his father one time for reading the Bible in the house. So this day when we were baptizing, he was just taking care of his cows. Because Ugandans have a lot of, uh, uh, how they call them, uh, cat, people who raise cows, you know. Nomadic. In nomadics, there's a lot of them. That's the main thing in, in Uganda is cows and uh, crops. They, they are very traditional people. And so he was on the other side taking care of his sheep, I mean of his cows. And the power of God touches him. So he starts to come. When he comes close by, we see him coming. And I, I, I don't know who he is. The father is busy baptizing. And then he puts up his hands. And the whole crowd goes crazy. Because they know the pain that this man has been to them as a church. And so the whole crowd goes crazy. And we're like, what's going on? And the pastor starts crying. And he says, that, that's my son. And my son has fought me for all of his life. He was not living at home because he didn't want to be a Christian. He didn't want anything to do with the Lord. So he came forward. <laughs> we led him to the Lord. We baptized him. And that was the biggest, because of him, two other people gave their lives to Christ. <laughs> because of his baptism. The driver who was, who, because we had to hire a truck to bring people for the baptism, the driver who had brought people, he was sitting in the car and he saw what was happening. He got out of the car and he came. So when he came, I said, this guy looks familiar. 
And I said, yes, I'm the driver. So we're like, you want to get baptized? He said, yes, but I need to give my life to Jesus first. So we led him to the Lord. And after that, we baptized him. So what I'm saying is that all of this to say that we have one. We, Jesus left us with one mission. To go into the world and to preach the gospel to all creation. And so you may not go to Africa. Yours might be your, your office. Yours might be your house even. Some of you are here, you're married. You have husbands who are, not, who are not believers. You have children. I don't get it how a mother can go to sleep when her child is not a believer. I don't get it how a mother can eat throughout the year when her child is under drugs. Praise the Lord. But my thing is, my desire is that from sharing these things, you see the water. I didn't want to get in that water. I was like, is there another place we can go to? And they said, no, ma'am, this is the only... And they were so happy to get in that river. I could go on and on. But I just want to say this to... Not to share you the pictures and say, I went to Africa. That's not the point. The point is to tell us that Jesus is about to come back. And one of the things that we are going to regret is one day us going to heaven and we see a multitude going to hell because they have not had the gospel. I pray that your heart can be fired up that when you come to church, you're coming to church to be empowered, that you may go back and be a vessel unto the Lord, whatever the Lord is sending you. Thank you so much, Daddy, for the opportunity. We be to God. Can you stretch your hands and let's pray for her? Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Oh, Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you for this grace. Alash kana hofred of vos kana haduale fe. Haduale felush kana vale haduale felush kana vatua venes and dushela. Hade mina havra ruski biano tave. Tanveliano sedushke vila hatu abenuzile hotenke pelu desaza. We thank you, Father. We ask in the name of Jesus. May this fire, may this fire never be dampened in the name of Jesus Christ. May the grace of God upon your life not be wasted in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we ask today, keep this fire burning. Keep the hunger burning. Keep the desire for souls burning in heart. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We cover you today with the power of God. We shield you today as a church family. With the grace and the blood of Jesus Christ. No plan of the wicked, no plots, and no agenda of the evil one against you will ever stand in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Because you have gone out to save souls, whatever needs to be redeemed in your life, may God redeem it. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Thank you so very, very much. We are so, so, so proud of you. God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. God is a good God. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1. And we're going to read verse 3 and 4. And then we'll jump to verse 16. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 3. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. Verse 4. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. Let's read that again. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God did what? God, he separated. God created a division between light and darkness. He separated them. 
they should never cohabit. Light and darkness should never cohabit. Last week, we learned that darkness speaks of evil and wickedness, right? Light speaks of God, his blessings, his goodness. Are we right? Verse 16. And God did what? Then God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. Father, we thank you today. Same way you separated light from darkness, we ask today, Wherever, however, darkness has found its way into anyone's life today, let there be a separation in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name, you may be seated. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Our God is a good God. We're still going to talk a little bit today regarding revealing the light of the kingdom. Revealing the light of the kingdom. And today, um, our subject is unquenchable life by light. Unquenchable life by light. I want and unquenchable living, and if that's going to happen, it's going to be by light. It is very, very important for us to see this scripture as well. Second Corinthians chapter four, Second Corinthians chapter four and verse four. Second Corinthians chapter four and verse four. Let's see what the Bible says. It says the God whose minds the God of this age has what blinded. Who do not believe, less what? The light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. Verse 5. For, who do not pre for we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves, your bond servants, for Jesus' sake. Verse six, look at verse 6. For it is the God who what? Who commanded light to shine where? God did not command light to shine into darkness. He commanded light to shine out of darkness. Who has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. This scripture here tells us how we became born again. Remember, Ephesians told us that we were once darkness. So before we became born again, what God did for you to be saved is that God, by his power, he allowed light to shine out of the dark places that we were. And that was how the illumination came and you became born again. So, you are a product of light. The Bible says we are children of light. Glory be to God. Amen. Can somebody check the air condition by the door on this side here? Hallelujah. We are what? Children of light. And because we are children of light, our life must take on that shape in everything that we do. The enemy is busy and his job, according to the Bible, is to steal, kill, and destroy. In John 10, 10, the Bible says, Jesus Christ came that we should what? Have life and that we should have that life until it overflows. Then he says, Satan came and his assignment is to steal, kill, and destroy. But he came that we should have life. So, the job of the devil is to kill the life out of everything that pertains to the believer's life. 
Now, anything that has to do with you, Satan is looking for ways to take away the life. He wants to take away the life out of your business, the life out of your marriage, the life out of your career. He wants to take away the life out of your family. His job, because Jesus came to give life, Satan came to take life. Okay? So, it is very important for us to know that there is something I have to do in order that Satan does not take away the life in anything that pertains to my life. Because it is possible to be alive and not be alive. Glory be to God. It is possible to be alive. The Bible says the people thought they were alive, but they are dead. So we have to understand what is the system that God has put in place in order for me not to allow the enemy to take away the life in everything that is good and everything that is godly in my life. So in order to, for the devil to succeed, the only way the devil can destroy anything in the believer's life is to take away the light that they're wrong with. That's why it's very important for you to learn what light is and the effect of this light we're talking about in life. Glory be to God. Now, if you are a Bible student, you understand that Jesus Christ is the product of the word. Is that right? And that Jesus is light. That Jesus is life. So, the word produced Jesus. I asked somebody a question recently. Um, I said, um, between rice and jollof rice, if you were to choose, which one do you value the most? Wow. You value jollof rice more than rice. That's good. That's a serious revelation of ignorance. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> Glory be to God. <laughs> Amen? So, I'm giving the choice between rice and jollof rice. And a lot of people said they want jollof rice. <laughs> Amen? Glory be to God. So, you want rice, you value rice because you know that rice will produce the jollof for you. Is that right? If you are given a choice to pick between Jesus and the word, which one will you pick? You pick what? Somebody said they will pick Jesus. You are not different from the person who picked jollof rice <laughs> over rice. <laughs> Amen. I am saying, if you understand the place of the word, you will understand that if you have the word, you have everything. It was the word that produced Jesus. So if the word produced Jesus, the Jesus that we follow, the Jesus that saved us, the Jesus that we honor and we respect, if the word of God produced such a great miracle, child of God, in your life, if you can have the word, the word can produce whatever you desire. Are you here? That means if I'm sick in my body, I shouldn't be pursuing healing. I should be pursuing the word of God. If I have any challenge in my life, what I should be paying attention to is do I have the word that we produce? Just like somebody is hungry, you are not looking for food. You are looking or you should be looking for the ingredients that we produce the food. Because once you have the ingredients, all you need is to know how to mix it together and produce what you need in life. Glory be to God. And so we are saying today that that word produced Jesus and that Jesus says that he is light. So if 
I must live a life that is unquenchable. What I need is light. Have you, have you not seen that even plants can survive without light? Plants can survive without life, light. You as a child of God, you cannot survive without light. And that light can only come to bear in your life when you are in touch with the word of God. You need the word of God. And so, if you are not in touch with the word of God, Satan will kill your light. The Bible says the light that we have. Give me uh, Matthew chapter 6 and verse 22. Matthew 6 and verse 22. Let's see a very disturbing reality. It says the lamp of the body is what? Is the eye. If therefore your eye is good. King James says if your eye is single. Your whole body will be what? Hmm. If your eye is single. The many trouble of people in life is that their eye is not single. They put their eyes in too many things. They are too distracted. The Bible says the, 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 the lamp of the body is your eye. The light of your body is your eye. You use your eye to see. So the Bible says where there is no vision, the people perish. But then it says we have light because we are the light of the world. But verse 23 is very disturbing. Look at what verse 23 says. It says, but what? If your eye is bad, your whole body will be what? Will be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in, in you is darkened, how great. So... You can have light, and that light can be darkened. You can have understanding. So it is possible to start with light and end up without light. It is possible to start your journey in a life, to start a business, to start a career, to start a ministry, to start a marriage, to start a relationship with light. But if you don't know what to do, that light can be darkened. And the Bible says, if that happens, is the worst kind of darkness. It doesn't mean there is no light around you, but it's saying everybody is powered and lived successfully based on the light that is within. If you don't have light on the inside, you will stumble and keep stumbling in life. Because what powers your journey and illuminates your path in life is not the light on the outside. It is the light that is on the inside. If you don't have light on the inside, you can't have light on the outside. Glory be to God. Because life will threaten you with so much darkness around you that you will see failure all the time. But until you see failure on the inside, you can't experience failure on the outside. You need to fail first on the inside before that devil can cause failure outside. Before you fall sick, the devil must attack you from within before he can attack you on the outside. Whatever you see happening around you, don't deal with it on the outside. Deal with it from within first. Glory be to God. And what you need to keep track of is how much light do you have? The light that you have is necessary. If you are going to live a sustainable life. Because life is all about relevance. Glory be to God. You know in my meditation. This morning I just, it just occurred to me. That we, were, we are all living to die. I know you didn't like that. <laughs> Amen. Are you aware of that? That you are living. I am living to die. <laughs> I don't know when. You don't know when. But we are all living to die one day. The pain of life is doing nothing while I'm alive and then I just die. <laughs> Amen. You see, the relevance of everybody in life, if you check carefully, 90% of the people that are really relevant in life 
their relevance only make any meaning after they died. So if you are doing nothing right now, people might just feel bad that you didn't live long or you pass away, but guess what? There is nothing else that you left as a track that you lived here. Somebody say, God forbid. That is why it's important for you to learn the lesson I'm about to share with you today. That I want to live a life of relevance. I want to live a life of relevance. And if my life will be a life of relevance, it means that I must have the light required to run the race of life. You must have light. And this light is not touch light or flashlight. This light is light that Jesus Christ ignite from the inside. And once you are able to sustain that light, then you will live a life of significance. Glory be to God. You see, sometimes a life of relevance could just be touching one person. How many of you know that pastor? Do you know the pain of being a pastor and your son? Do you understand the pain of being a pastor and your son grows to be 40 years and does not believe in the gospel? Fought you every way. And then suddenly, somebody showed up. And then that boy gave his life to Jesus. You see, the relevance of that guy, everything about that pastor, everything he has labored, it was one person that God used to create an impact in his family. The behind the scenes story of how she left and went to Uganda, you don't want to hear it. Yet, there was somebody for 40 years, nobody. You think his father can preach? You think his father didn't pray? <laughs> he did everything. But guess what? The one person assigned by heaven that that boy will hear the gospel through their voice is only her. I am saying... If you don't have the light to live a life of relevance, many will die and go to hell because you can't even take a flyer. You can't even send a text message and tell somebody that Jesus is Lord. Glory be to God. Because it doesn't matter the anointing on the Father. It didn't matter the anointing in the community. And everybody who knew Jesus, as far as heaven is concerned, there is one person assigned. There were several people that God could have sent to Egypt to deliver the children of Israel. Why was God bent on Moses? Moses flunked the test. God didn't give up on Moses. Hallelujah. God knew that Moses would not even go to the enter the promised land. God was still insisting it got to be more. What is that thing that God is insisting that it must be you that we do? You need light. You need light. It got to be you. It has to be you. So to live a life of relevance, number one, you must have light. And if you must have light, you must live a life of purity. Our x-ray is the life of the man called Daniel. For about 70 years, this guy was so relevant. What made Daniel to be so relevant in Babylon? You know, we are in the Babylonian system. Glory be to God. I hope you know that. I've told you before, a believer comes out of Egypt, and then in his, on his journey to the promised land, two things will happen. Either he enters the promised land and stay there, or while he is there, Babylon comes and arrests him. Or Babylon transports itself into. So, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were transported into Babylonian system just like all of us today. That is the system we live in. How can I live a life of relevance when everybody around me is anti-Christ? Give me Daniel chapter 
5 verse 11. How? He says, there is a man in your kingdom. Daniel 5, 11. There is a man in your kingdom who is a spirit of the holy God and in the days of your father, light and understanding. Oh, the entire life of relevance of Daniel is captured in this scripture that he carries something. He carried the Holy Spirit. You have the Holy Spirit too. He has light. So that means that it's not enough to have the Holy Spirit because there are other things that come after you can pray in the Holy Ghost. Do you have light for life? So he had light, understanding, wisdom like the wisdom of the gods. He had wisdom as wisdom of the gods. We're going to see how that plays out in his life. Glory be to God. A life of purity is a necessity for a life of relevance. The Bible says clearly that sin is a killer. It says the wages of sin is death. So sin pays. Sin actually is looking for employees. Uh, and in fact, sin is the easiest employer. Yeah, yeah. He, 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 you, I mean, he can hire you any day, any time. They are always hiring. <laughs> Glory be to God. Yeah. I mean, sin does not wait for you to go and apply. He comes to you and says, do you want a job? <laughs> do you want to lie? Do you want to fornicate? Do you want to, you know, unforgiveness? Do you want to cheat? Sin is an employer. But the Bible says, just like any employer we pay, his own payment is death. Sin pays with death. The soul that sinned, what happens? Aha. It didn't say the person that sins. It is a soul that sinned. And it is a soul that will die. The person may not die, but the soul will die. Every time you sin, something dies in your soul. Oh, glory be to God. Sin is a killer. The Bible says the stink of death is sin. Many of you, you, you have not come close to being stung by a bee or a wasp. Have you ever experienced this? Uh -huh. The Bible says whenever, just like when a bee stings a person, uh, they experience pain, right? Once a bee stings a person, it injects poison into the person. The Bible says, when you sin, death has stunk you. Something dies around you. Something dies within you. Something dies in your life. Something. You can't work for sin and he doesn't pay you. He will pay by killing your career, killing your dreams, killing your business, killing your marriage, killing your confidence in life. He kills your hope. Sin is a killer. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. When Adam and Eve sin, they were shocked they didn't die. Because God said the day you eat of it, you will die. They ate and didn't die. Well, something died. Yeah, confidence died. They began to fear the presence of God. They began to fear the animals. They lost their IQ. The smart guy who knew how to name all the animals, all of a sudden, he was confronted with a problem. The solution he provided was fig leaves that would dry up in the evening. When you live in sin, you will lose ideas to sustain and uphold your life. Sin is terrible. I know people don't talk about it today, but I want to let you know if you must live a life of relevance. You see, why do you brag about anybody can sin? I mean, sin is cheap. It's like when you work for sin, you, go, you don't even brag about it because anybody can get a job with sin. You know, there are places when you work, you feel cool that I walk here and there, right? You know, like this is a big company. That's where I work. 
Nobody should be proud. That's the deep foolishness that people are proud of sinning. It's nonsense. Your mind will die. People will rise. Your mind will be so foolish. Because sin is a killer. In Daniel chapter 1 verse 8, Daniel purposed within himself that he will not defile himself. He made up his mind. Make up your mind before sin knocks on your door to hire you. Knock, uh, hallelujah. Make up your mind first. He made up his mind in the Babylonian system. He said, no, I will not live in sin. Whatever is your own idiosyncratic sin, that means the sin that the enemy has customized for you. It might not be the type of sin that everybody falls into. The Bible says, lay aside every weight and every sin that so easily besets you. If you are going to live a life of relevance, you need light. And if light must stay with you, you must live a life of purity. Number two. You must live a lifestyle of prayer. We talked about prayer not too long ago. Daniel lived a life of prayer. What kind of prayer to be specific? Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 17 tells us the type of prayer that if you want to maintain relevance, you need to be praying. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse uh, what? 17. Look at this powerful type of prayer that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Uh -huh. Verse 18. The eyes of your what? Be illuminated. This is, the most, this is the prayer that you must pray every day, every time. Let the eyes of my understanding be enlightened. Let the eyes of my understanding be illuminated. You know why? Because after this request or this prayer, the next thing all the way to verse 23 is what is required for dominion as a child of God. Because he says, when the eyes of your understanding is enlightened, then first, you will know the hope of your calling. If you don't know the hope of your calling, you will give up your calling. You will give up your assignment. But in order not to give up, the eyes of your understanding must be illuminated. Otherwise, you may not see the good in the calling of God in your life. You may not see the greatness in what God has ushered it into because it won't look like that. God talks big, but he starts small all the time. Oh, glory be to God. And so if your eyes of understanding is not open, you will despise the day of small beginning. Hallelujah. How can a man or the savior that the government shall be upon his shoulder be born in a manger among sheep? That's why they missed it. But you see, God is too wise. God knows that the environment has a major role to play in the destiny of a man. So if Jesus will be a lamb, he must be born among lambs. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, glory be to God. <laughs> Are you listening to me? Because the environment will play on his character, on his disposition. So while he was still a baby, he was hearing, man. That, that, that thing was entering Jesus. So he began to behave like a lamb when he grew up. Your environment will shape your destiny. Your environment. So be careful where you go. Be careful where you sit. Be careful. It is very important. Because if the eyes of your understanding is not enlightened, you will mess around and give up the hope of your calling. Give me the verse again. That you may what? The eyes of your understanding be enlightened. That you may know the hope of your calling. And then what? What are the riches of the glory of his inheritance? Hmm. In the who? Not in you alone. In fact, in the sense that if your eyes are not open, you will mess around with the God that is your destiny helper. <laughs> yeah, because you, you, you will see them, they won't look like it. But the Bible says the riches, the glory, the riches of the glory of God's inheritance is in the saints of God. So as we are seated here right now, the Bible says he has this water, treasure 
in earthen vessels. Every one of us, God hid something in you. And what he hid in you, I may not see it because if I don't see it, I may disrespect you, I may despise you. Meanwhile, you are the one because right now it is possible that your present condition does not reveal that you will ever amount to anything. But listen to me, God put something inside of you. And if I don't understand, I may not treat you the way I should treat you. You know, some people have walked away from their husband. They have walked away from their wife because they didn't see it. Hallelujah. Some people have walked away from a great business partner. Some people have walked away from a great relationship that was meant to turn their lives around. The Bible says, until the eye of your understanding is enlightened you will not know the glory of the riches of his inheritance among the saints. Some more, quickly. Oh my God. And then what? And do you see, this is all from your eyes of understanding being enlightened. Then he says, there's something else when your eyes open. The exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe. Hmm. The exceeding what? Greatness of his power towards us who believe. And he says, just in case you don't know what that is, let me give you a little bit information. It says, according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ Jesus when he raised him from the dead. In other words, it says there is power directed towards you that there is no arrow of the wicked that should hit you. But if you don't see, you may dog in the direction of the arrow. <laughs> but when you can see that this is where the protection is, I will stay there. Many people have moved out away from their covering because they can't see. The Bible says there is exceeding greatness of his power. And he says that kind of power, he never used it anywhere. The first time he detonated that kind of power was on a dead body. He says if that power raised a dead body, no matter what is dying in your life, if your eyes of understanding is enlightened, you know there is no way the devil can kill the plan and the purpose of God in my life. Are you still here? I hope you know. That God has given us a strong example that if it is the word, you can't destroy it. <laughs> Amen? That if it is the word, if your business is the word, if your marriage starts with the word, if your family is wrapped in the word, don't worry about what the devil is doing. Oh, no, 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 no. Because God has given us an eternal, eternal example. They mutilated Jesus. They, that, that God allowed them to wound him so badly. And then three days, Jesus. It doesn't matter how you'll be wounded in life. As long as the word is there, you will heal again. Oh, glory be to God. Hallelujah. You see, when Jesus rose, I thought they should take him to the hospital to bandage his wounds. I thought three days is too small for that kind of brutality to become scars. If it is the word, it doesn't matter how you've been injured in life. It doesn't matter how much the devil has messed with you. If it is the word, that's why you must value the word. Glory be to God. Are you still here? So you must have a very powerful prayer life. Daniel was relevant, number three, because he had the gift of God in him. What gift of God is in you that you're ignoring? Everyone has a gift from God. Every one of us, there's a gift of God in your life. And it is that gift that is meant for you to rise and be relevant in life. The devil will give you other giftings. He will distract you to something else because he knows a man's gift is the only thing God has designed that will make room for him in life. Hallelujah. You, you, if you are trying to make room with something else, meanwhile God says, no, I have a gift for you. That gift will make room for you. It is that gift. What do I need to do? Pay attention to the gift. The Bible says, God, as for these three Hebrew boys or four Hebrew boys, God gave them wisdom. He gave them skills. He gave them understanding. 
And the Bible reveals to us that they became relevant in the midst of conflict. You see, when you have light, you can walk with witches. I know you just want to ban witches and rebuke witches and run away from witches. Daniel was walking his colleagues. <laughs> The, 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 the colleagues of Daniel were witches. So every day he went to work, he, he, he was, a, which A was his next guy, you know, glory be to God. He, 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 his subordinate was a witch, his supervisor was a witch, his colleague was, he was going to lunch with witches and wizards. But he had light and light can never be subject to darkness. The, prop, the reason why, you see, it, once you have light, you will stand strong. Oh, glory be to God. Listen to me. That's why I told you, value the word. Value the word. As long as you're in touch with the word, you're in touch with that which produced the Jesus you're believing in. Amen? By the way, before I forget, uh, we finished reading our, uh, well, not we, some people <laughs> finished reading the Bible. And uh, I, will, I will talk about it before we leave tonight, okay, this morning, okay? Some people finished their Bible and there's something else we need to do. Glory be to God. If you're going to have a life of relevance, it requires light. But if that light must work and sustain you, keep the right company. Amen. Keep the right company company. Amen? You know, the ten virgins, all of them, they have lamb, right? Uh -huh. So the birds of the same feather, they flock together. Yeah. When some lost their light, they separated. Five foolish kept going their own way. <laughs> the five wise began to go their own way. There is no relationship beside you and your wife that is forever. Amen? Anybody that has water in their hand and you have fire on your hand, you people are not compatible. They are going to kill your fire. Amen. A day came. Remember Daniel was working with witches and wizards, right? Uh -huh. He went to work. All of a sudden they said uh, his colleague didn't show up at work. What happened? Oh, the king said they should kill him. How about the other guy over there? I didn't see him. Oh yeah, they killed him too. Why? Oh, the king had a dream last night. <laughs> And he said he forgot the dream, and he wants us to tell him the dream and then the interpretation. And uh, before you came to the office, we went for a briefing, and uh, we make sure. Give me, <laughs> give me Daniel chapter 2 and verse 10, so you, you know that I'm not making it up. Daniel chapter 2 and verse 10. We have plenty of media people today, and uh, scripture is. Okay. The Chaldeans answered the king after he told them about the dream, right? That he had a dream, he forgot the dream, and he wanted them to tell him the dream and then the interpretation. That was why they hired them. Do you understand? That was their job. It's, it's just like this is our job. Except that today, uh, COVID-19 showed up, so that's a problem. They've never seen this kind of problem before. So they said to the king, there is not a man on earth who can tell the king's matter. Did you see that? I needed to put yourself in that kind of scenario. That life introduced a problem in your house. <laughs> and there is no medical cure for it. Life introduces you to a financial difficulty that right now, even if you have 15 jobs, they are still going to take your house. 
There is no man on earth who can tell the king's matter. Nobody can solve this problem. Therefore, no king, no lord or ruler has ever asked such things of any magician, astrologer. Well, unfortunately, there's a king that is asking you now. You can give all the excuses you want that, no, that kind of problem, you know, it never happened in our family. Well, unfortunately, you're in the midst of it now. <laughs> Nobody has ever dealt with this kind of thing since people do business. This is, well, unfortunately, this is what you're confronted with. What do you do when life introduces something fresh, something new that no, you have no reference to run to to solve the problem? Next verse. So, let's see what the witches were saying. It is a difficult thing that the king requests, and there is no other who can tell it to the king except who? How many of you remember we read? It says, Daniel, he had wisdom as what? The, mm. They said this problem, only God can solve it. How many of you know the Bible says that ye are gods? Hallelujah. The Bible says ye. So, um, because the Bible says you are gods, it means that life will be so confident to introduce the problem that only gods can solve. <laughs> so, when you see the problem, you can complain all to, well, you may be complaining from a human perspective, but in the realm of the spirit, they have considered you that there is no temptation that has taken us, but such as is common unto man. For God is too faithful to allow you to be tempted above that which you can handle. So, there is no problem that you have right now as a child of God that is too much for you. There is no problem. The issue is that, do you recognize that you are a God? He says, this problem, only gods can deal with it. We are only witches. But you see, witches are in different levels. Daniel's witchcraft, oh, Jesus Christ. His own witchcraft was higher than all of them. Then the Bible says, when they said, he says, whose dwelling is not with the flesh. He that dwelleth in the secret place. They, there are problems in life. It is only for those that dwell in the secret place of the most high God. Hallelujah. When you dwell in that secret place, uh, remember the secret place of God. The Bible says that he dwells in light that is unapproachable. So the secret place of God is the place of light. He who lives in light, there is no problem. I pray today in the name of Jesus, you will hunger for light. You will hunger for light. That problem in your life, it can be solved because in the realm of the spirit, they know you are a God. Whether you believe it or not, that is why the problem came. That is why God allowed it to come. Hallelujah. Because they believe that you can handle it. So, it says, those who dwell in the flesh, if you are always in the flesh, always mad, always carnal, those who dwell in the flesh can't solve problems. The problem you are dealing with, that you still have time to be angry with people and live in unforgiveness, you really don't know the problem. That is not even a problem yet. Maybe you don't perceive it as a problem. Because there are problems that will make you forgive the person that killed your mother. There are problems you'll be confronted because, you see, God knows what he has put in place. You know, it was God who told us about the devil, right? And he told us that he has the capacity to devour your life. What did Daniel do when he was dealing with such a problem? I said, keep the right company. Verse 16, Daniel went to the king and said, king, give me time. Time to do what? Time to pray. I want to ask you a question today. The problem you are dealing with, you have been praying for a long time. Will you be so confident to say, hey, you this problem. Just wait, let me go and pray first. Do you understand the level of confidence that this guy has about prayer? That the king started killing people 
And he said, if I go and pray, I will not die. Oh, glory be to God. <laughs> if I go and pray, I will not die like other people are dying. If I pray, my own business, my own ministry, my own career, my own family, nothing. The devil can destroy my family if I pray. Daniel says, give me time. The issue is this. Do you know what prayer can produce? Because, you see, buying time was dangerous. I hope you know that. That he will tell the king, why are you so upset like that? Something is wrong with you. Just give me time. Coming back, I'll give you the answer. And the king will be like, wow. Okay. <laughs> I guess the king would have prepared so well. If this guy, Daniel, shows up. <laughs> Look. No, we are going to kill him in 15 days. So we'll start by mutilating his big toes. Oh God. You know those kings are not, they don't play. Good. So Daniel knew. I am saying, build confidence in prayer to know that prayer will produce the answers you need. Do you understand that? Believe in that thing called prayer that when I go talk to my God, it doesn't matter what the problem is, my problem will be solved. That was the place where Daniel, but he took it to another level. Daniel did not go to pray this prayer by himself. That is why stop fighting everybody around you. There are issues in your life that your own prayer alone can't work it. Daniel had a good prayer life, but look at verse 18. What happened to Daniel? And Daniel went to that, okay, no, verse 17. No, no, no. Okay, then Daniel went to his house and made the decision not to Hananiah, Mishael, Azariah, his companions, uh -huh, that they might seek mercy from God of heaven concerning this secret so that Daniel and his companions might not perish with the rest of the witches in Babylon. Verse 19. What happened? Then the secret. Wow. He, they prayed and they could read somebody's mind. They knew what the guy dreamt and then knew Jesus. Now, he says this is a difficult problem. What is the problem in your life today? Do you have companions that can pray? Do you have people who believe in prayer? I hope you know. Uh, if Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were not praying, guys, by the time Daniel came, they said, Daniel, you know, we don't work in that office, right? This is your own problem. Yeah, because, yeah, he was like, no, 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 no. Ah, uh, no, please. Yeah, just please don't. If we do anything here, the king comes after us. We are all going to be dead. So please, just move out now. They didn't do that. They all believed in prayer. The companions, the Bible says, he that walks with the wise shall be wise. But the companion of fools will be destroyed. Choose your companions wisely as a believer. Do, do you understand that? Choose your companions wisely as a child of God. Know that there are people that have a heart for God and heart for prayer. If you can find one, you have found the greatest treasure. Amen? Amen? Yeah, somebody who will put aside their own problem and say, Daniel will not die. Hallelujah. Did you understand that? Daniel will not die. You know, after the prayer, Daniel went back. Guess what? That prayer promoted Daniel. And then Daniel said, hey, oh king, I didn't pray by myself. If you read it all, he told the king about his friends. And his friends were also elevated. Hallelujah. That means when you pray with somebody... Whether it is their own prayer point or somebody else's prayer point, it, when God answers that prayer, you will benefit from that prayer too. Glory be to God. Finally, be addicted to the word of God. If your light must stand, 
you must be a word addict. Stay addicted to the word of God. You know, any time, many times when we read the word of God, you are looking for feelings. No. It's not feelings. Just love the word. Just read the word. Something is entering you. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. The word of God is entering you. And the word of God will solve issues in your life that you didn't even know about. I told you before, um, when you take any pill, you don't advise the pill what to do. Right? You take a Tylenol. You don't tell the Tylenol, hey, Tylenol, you know, yesterday I was tired, so it's headache. So don't even try to go to my foot, you know. Just go up here. <laughs> you don't tell him that. The Tylenol is wiser than you. He knows where to go. He knows what to touch. He knows what to deal with. The Bible says he sent his word and his word healed them and delivered them from their destructions. But you must be addicted. The Bible says study to show yourself a proof unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Stay in the word. Read the word. Spend time in the word. You are valuing the word when you do that. Glory be to God. As you are reading the word, the word will be killing some weaknesses in you. There are certain things that, see, when you stay in the word long enough, the word will begin to fight certain things in your life. Hallelujah. If you spend time in the word enough, it will kill some things that you didn't pray for. Because it is a person that is coming inside of you. The words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. So it's a life that is entering you. And that life is consistent with the nature of the word itself, which is God. Hallelujah. So there are things that begins to irritate you because of what you are eating. When the word of God enters you, remember it is the seed of God's word, right? Just like when a woman who used to love steak a lot, then a seed enters her. All of a sudden, she just wants to be drinking water. Well, hopefully. <laughs> but because the seed tempers with her appetite. The seed tempers with everything. Okay, somebody's looking at me like, okay, that's me there. Amen? Because the seed tempers with you. The word of God is seed. Once it enters you, it begins to change. You don't have faith before. Your faith is being built up as you keep reading the word. Glory be to God. Stay addicted to the word because that word is what empowers you to have light. If you must be sustained, you need a constant daily dosage of the word of God. Have you been blessed today? Yes. Glory be to God. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you guys so much for listening to this message. We do hope you were truly blessed by it. Please don't forget to like this video, comment, subscribe, share with people, friends, family, colleagues, everyone around you. And also don't forget to turn on your post notification bell. It's right here so that you can get notified whenever we post a video. Thank you guys so much once again and do have a blessed week. Bye-bye.